I'm Taylor DeBose. I'm the department chair of nursing at Central Carolina Technical College. Today we're going to be touring Central Carolina's health science campus. Right. This first room is our Titan Simulation Center. We have nursing simulation through here. In our first room, we have our OB simulator. Her name is Victoria and she actually births babies for us. <laughs> How many babies has she had? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. Poor Victoria. Right. She, she does her work. So she's got her belly up here and she will push the baby out and our nursing students get to practice taking care of her. And then while she's laboring, they help deliver the baby. And then afterwards, they have to take care of mom and baby in the postpartum oh. period. Uh, we have the monitors up here that will show the fetal heart rate while the baby's still inside of her. Um, so they're watching mom's vital signs and baby's vital signs. Does um, she react to different things you do? She does. So she, when she's cut on, you see that she's blinking. Mm -hmm. um, we can make her talk so she interacts with the students. They can take real vital signs on her. Um, do real checks. We can swap out her belly so she has the birthing belly and then she has one that's for Leopold maneuvers where you're feeling exactly where that baby is positioned and knowing if she's in a good position to deliver that baby. Wow. D can, is she breathing? Can you feel her breath? Or? Yes, she is breathing. Wow. She's breathing. She has her own heartbeat. You can feel her pulses. Very neat stuff. Very. How long have you had Victoria? Um, we have had her for years now. Uh -huh. um, so she has birthed a lot of babies right here at Central Carolina, <laughs> trained a lot of students on how to take care of these women. And then over here we have oh, placenta. Right. Very lifelike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we teach students what to look at, how to assess this. It even feels kind of real. Um, we've got the umbilical cord here. That's also very lifelike. This is the baby that she births out. Uh -huh. Now this isn't the baby that the students take care of. So as soon as this baby comes out and is delivered, they switch over to our simulation baby. Okay. So this is newborn Tori. Mm -hmm. She's a um, neonatal simulator. She can, um, she has a heart rate, she breathes. She can also turn blue around mm -hmm. her mouth and everywhere, and that would indicate that they need to do something to help her out. Um, we have our radiant warmer here that actually works, so the students will turn the lights on and they can provide heat to the baby afterwards and hook up oxygen if they needed to. Um, so they do a lot of care with baby right here, and then they'll be able to see baby's vital signs up there. And we've got the neonatal stethoscopes that are much tinier so they can hear that fast heart rate. Um, with newborns, their heartbeat is going to be anywhere between like 110 to 160 beats per minute. So mm -hmm. it's pretty fast, especially compared to an adult where it's normally 60 to 100. Right. Um, so it takes a lot of practice to be able to get used to counting that fast. So. In this simulation, they spend um, three hours in here. Mm -hmm. So we'll have one group come in and they'll labor the patient. They'll do the delivery and do immediate postpartum care. And then we'll swap out and they're in the other room watching um, their classmates complete their part. And then we debrief and see what we could have done better. And sometimes even come back in for more practice if needed. Great. Um, over here, we have an IV arm. So this is where they practice putting in IVs. And we have the same IV pump that are used in the local hospitals around here, so they can go ahead and get practice with that. They can also practice venipuncture, and the arm will actually give them blood return when they get mm. into the vein, so they know if they've done it correctly or not. Wow. And then we have an electronic medication dispensing machine here, um, which is similar to what they see in the hospital. So they click on their patient, and it'll make a medication pop out the drawer and they know that that's the right one for their patient. Further back, we have one of our adult simulators. We have quite a few of these guys. So these are our Apollo adult mannequins. Um, they also have vital signs, they have pulses. 
So the students will train on how to assess their patient with him. Um, we use these quite a bit for our adult med surge classes and our mental health class as well. Um, so we see all kinds of scenarios. Sometimes it'll be a patient with a cardiac problem or a respiratory problem. So it's very versatile and we can show the students a lot of different scenarios that they may encounter in real life. Um, they've got the screen up there that would show vital signs with the patient in here. And we've got the computer where, the, where they do their charting and look at the patient's vital signs from previous encounters lab values, radiology reports, that type of thing. On the wall, we have working suction um, set up. We have the oxygen flow meter. We can also do medical air and even pull a code blue if they needed to. What is a code blue? So a code blue would be when the patient is either not breathing or doesn't have a pulse or maybe mm. both. Um, so that would mean that the patient needed resuscitation. So they would go and grab their crash cart, bring it into the room and start CPR on the patient. Okay. So we try to do the scary scenarios like that in here first. Mm -hmm. So when they encounter it, once they're out there nursing, it's not as intimidating because they've seen it before. This mm -hmm. is a very low stakes environment, meaning that we allow them to make mistakes in here because then it encourages them to ask questions when they need to and not be afraid when it really happens because they've practiced it before. So we don't fail them off of any right. simulations, which is nice. There's always a chance to go back, try again, do better, or just learn from it. But in their last semester, they do get to practice a code so they know that the patient is going to die during the simulation mm. and they have been taught about the medications that they need, about how to do CPR, and we let them go to work doing that. And here, if you want to see, is our control room. This one goes to the OB room that we mm -hmm. just saw and it goes to the pediatric room. So the instructors have the tablet in here, which is where we're controlling what the mannequin's doing. We can change the vital signs and everything right here. Um, this is the fetal heart rate and the contraction monitor that is on the patient. So we can change this in here as well. And it shows up on the screen in the room. So we can see what the students are seeing. So this you make the mannequin have contractions? Yes, wow. we do. And they register right down here and this one's showing the fetal heart rate. So what we ask the students to do is to be able to read this to see how well the baby is responding to contractions, to see if they're handling labor well, or if maybe she needs a C-section or mm -hmm. some kind of emergent intervention. Here are the patient's vital signs that will go up on the monitor in the room. Um, we can update these as the patient's status changes and in response to what the students do for the patient. So if they gave a blood pressure medicine, we could drop the blood pressure to show that that medicine took effect. So that's pretty neat too. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the camera here. We're able to zoom in. So if they were performing a skill like the IV insertion over here, I could zoom right in to see exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And we can record this so when they are evaluating themselves, they can see exactly what they did, which right. is a great learning tool because sometimes you don't realize it until you watch it back. Yeah. So they're in there alone and you're yes, in just here. students in there mm -hmm. and we're in here watching. We use the microphone to talk as the patient or the instructor mm -hmm. sometimes if needed. Um, and it plays on a speaker in the room. Mm -hmm. So it feels like they're in that environment. It's right. very immersive. Do you find that students um, perform differently if you were in there with them versus back here watching them? Yes. Yeah. So with instructors in the room, they become very reliant on us, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Um, in the clinical setting, once we're in the hospitals or in the long-term care facilities, they're used to having us right there. So if they have a question, they ask us. Mm -hmm. But when we're in here, we want to see what they know, right. their knowledge, how they critically think. And by taking the instructor out of the room and just leaving the students in there, they're able to yeah. prove that knowledge. The simulation room <laughs> is our pediatric room. Um, this is pediatric Hal. He is a high fidelity mannequin. Um, he does a lot of cool things. 
So he can blink just like the other one. He can make facial grimaces so he can show you when he's mad or mm. sad. Um, when we make him cry, he'll have little tears that form and fall down his face. <laughs> um, he'll talk, he'll scream at you. Um, we try to give them the realistic experience of a pediatric patient because it is very different from adults. Yeah. Um, he can actually track with his eyes. So if you were to hold your finger up to him and say, can you follow my eyes? You'd see that his eyes move along with your finger. Um, we check for pupil dilation and constriction with pen lights a lot in nursing as part of a neurological assessment and his pupils will actually respond to that. So you can see them get smaller when you shine the light on there and you can see them get bigger again once you take the light away. Um, his room is set up just like the other ones where he has the oxygen flow meter up there. We have the code if we needed it. We've got a little pediatric arm over mm -hmm. here because pediatric veins are much smaller and it takes a lot more practice to be able to find the veins and then successfully thread the catheter into it. He also has an IV pump. The students give him medicine and fluids through that. Um, you see that he has his toys and his bear in <laughs> here. So it's a lot of fun. Over here, we have the pediatric crash cart. This one's different from the adult crash carts, but the adult ones, they're red, they're lower to the ground, and they have bigger doors. With the pediatric crash cart, you see that it has all of these different colors here, and these drawers correspond to a weight, which you get from the Broslow tape. So this just makes it more accurate if you didn't know the weight of your patient. So you would measure them out, see which color they fell into, and that would be the drawer that they work out of if they needed any type of emergent intervention with the patient. The pediatric medications, everything is going to be weight-based okay. because we can't say that every seven-year-old is the same. Mm -hmm. So we would, this estimates their weight based off of their length. Um, it's been proven to be more accurate than just guessing a patient's weight or size. Um, so if we had an accurate weight on the patient, we wouldn't need this. We would just be able to know which drawer to go into. But if not for any reason, we would use this to measure and then use the drawer that goes along with this until we were able to get a weight. Great. We have the life pack on top, which our students are trained to use. So they cut it on if the patient is having some kind of emergency. They put the pads on the patient and this will analyze the rhythm and tell them if the patient needs to be defibrillated, which is where they're shocking the patient, trying to change their rhythm back into one that's compatible with life. Um, and it will tell them to resume CPR if they need to. It tells them when to do pulse checks. Um, so they do know how to do those throughout the program as well. Okay, so this is one of our nursing skills labs. So these are what we call static mannequins, meaning that they won't have vital signs. They're not gonna talk to you or come to life. Um, in here, they practice a lot of hands-on skills that just are repetitive in nature. So this patient here has a trach inserted. So our students will learn how to clean that trach, how to suction it, how to change it out when the patient needs it. They also do urinary catheters in here they practice their physical assessment and even things like giving a patient a bed bath mm. um, and changing out linens while the patient's still in the bed because it's harder than you think. It does take practice. Mm -hmm. um, so they still have the same wall setup that we saw in the simulation lab. They have their suction setup that does work. They have oxygen supplies over here. They have their sharps container in case they needed to start an IV or draw blood or give an injection their gloves and their hand sanitizer. We have the curtains that pull around for privacy. Um, so when we have students in here, they will be all over this room working together, taking care of their patients and honing in on their skills. In here they have two OR suites. And OR stands for operating room. Ooh, it's cold in here. It is very cold in here. These are very similar to what you would see in a hospital's operating room. Um, so they learn to assist with all kinds of different surgeries while they're in here. Um, they are working to get newer technology in here so they can start doing um, laparoscopic surgeries, things like that. They have their instrument trays. A big thing with surgical technology is 
learning sterile technique, mm -hmm. how to remain sterile, how to open things. Um, and with surgery, you want to make sure that it is sterile to decrease the risk of infection in your patients. So these rooms are extremely clean. They come in here with their surgical caps and their sterile gloves and the gowns and everything. And they learn how to assist with these surgeries. And what an OR like this be this cold or colder? Yes, absolutely. They do keep ORs very cold. Mm -hmm. For the sterile reason. Yes, okay. Absolutely. So the students in this program have to learn the names of all of the tools because if the surgeon asks for them, they have to know exactly what they're talking about. Right. There are many different tools and a lot of them have funny names, so mm -hmm. it can be difficult, but it's amazing how quickly these students pick up on it. How many are there? Um, I'd say hundreds. Wow, <laughs> yeah. And they've got their supplies up here, so if they needed anything extra during the surgery that they didn't anticipate, they've got it in here. So they can do different abdominal surgeries, so maybe an appendectomy taking somebody's appendix out. They'll learn how to scrub in on a C-section, so mm -hmm. they needed to take a baby out that way. Um, a whole variety of mm -hmm. things. And then they take their experience in here and they go into the hospitals and start to practice there um, with real surgeons and real patients to see how it's done. This program, I'm pretty sure it's five semesters long. Yeah. Um, they recently switched over to an associate degree. Mm -hmm. So once completing this program, they will have an associate degree in surgical technology. Great. And they are in desperate need for surgical technology. Yeah. So we have a different patient on this table. Here, thank you. Sometimes in surgery, they'll have the patient's arms out to the side like this and strapped down. This allows the anesthesiologist easy access to the patient's IV site, keeps the patient's arms out of the way and stable in a position because when they're asleep, they're not in full control over their body like they would be if they were awake. So that's why you see these over here. And they got the padding to keep the patient comfortable same thing under the patient's head. And then we've also got the heel protectors on the patient's mm -hmm. feet. Um, so they learn how to take care of patients in surgery of all different ages, sizes. It's very exciting. So in healthcare, we talk a lot about communication, um, how to work with different people. You will have some patients that are very anxious and mm -hmm. they're terrified, they're scared of medical providers, and then you'll have some that are more easygoing. So we learn how to take care of all people, um, diversity, inclusion, big thing in right. the medical field. Yeah. We try to keep them on their toes by mm -hmm. giving them different patient personalities every time. So we could change it at any moment um, because whoever's controlling that simulator is in control of how that patient's going to present. Okay. So we could make the patient angry and see how they'd respond. And if it's not the right response, they can practice again because we're in this, um, in this setting. So it's better than dealing with a real patient for the first time yes. where you can't go back if you've already said something. So. Definitely. So in the control room, y'all are controlling what the the person responds and what they say and Absolutely. do and then you can adjust it according to the way they adjust yes there's things where they scrub in uh -huh. so they have to scrub for several minutes to get ready to go into the sterile environment so they'll open this up and they will scrub their hands clean under their nails and do it in these sinks um, making sure that they are keeping that environment as sterile as possible so um, in nursing school and in surgical technology, hand washing is a big thing and we actually have skills units on it to teach you how to do it properly. Wow. So it seems like a simple thing, but it can be complicated in these settings. So we teach them and then they'll, they'll know that skill for the rest of and their life. Here is their sterile processing room. This is where they process all of the tools that they use during surgery and they get them sterile so they can be used in another surgery. So mm -hmm. part of their job is to manage these tools. Um, so they learn how to do that aspect of it in here. Some days you'll come in here and you'll see tons of tools scattered all over this counter with the tags and that's when the students are learning the names of the different tools. They get to work with them um, and get used to how they feel before they need to assist with them in a surgery. 
All right, so this is our pharmacy technician lab. We're not able to go in today, but they do have this room set up with, of course, fake medications, um, but they learn all about different medications, how to prepare them. Um, they learn how to count them quickly, like what you see in the pharmacy. So they do a lot of hands-on stuff in mm -hmm. this lab. They will be able to um, go work in pharmacies in the outpatient setting, like Walgreens, CVS, mm -hmm. or even within a hospital or doctor's office. Right. So a lot of options for them once they finish. Okay, so this is our medical assisting lab. This one's set up to be more like a clinic or doctor's office type setting. Um, so they have their patients up on the exam tables here, and they'll be taking vital signs on them running EKGs, maybe drawing blood. So they learn how to do all of that within this lab. Um, so a lot of the times in health sciences, we'll do a little bit of lecture, talk about what we're going to do, and then break out and actually go practice it, and then come back together and talk about what we can improve on, what we did well, um, and really just bring the learning together. Good. So it works out nice. We can address all types of learning styles within these environments. So this is our massage therapy lab. This is a two semester certificate program um, and they are eligible to sit for a licensing exam after this or a um, certification exam after this. You said it's two semesters. It is two semesters. Wow. Um, so these students will come fall and spring and then they can go out and be massage therapists. Um, so they actually perform massages on real people in this lab. Oh. So they'll invite their family, friends, <laughs> um, faculty, and it's open to the public as well. Um, so they're practicing these massages on real, on real people. Mm -hmm. So it's nice because people are getting affordable massages <laughs> <laughs> while the students are getting their practice hours that they need. Um, so they've got the massage beds in here. They've got, um, they'll put the clean linen out. They learn how to do all of that, make a very relaxing environment in here. They keep it nice and toasty in here. I was gonna to say, yeah. The they do them in the evening and mm -hmm. on Saturdays mostly. So this program is an evening program, which mm, is really okay. nice for people who go straight into the workforce yeah. or start a different thing and want to do this on top of that. So it, it helps a lot of those students with those needs. So they'll advertise it when they're getting ready to start that portion of it. And um, people can come in, sign up and get their massages. I think so. Okay, $25, yeah. that's a really good, affordable. yeah. yeah. <laughs> do y'all ever have a shortage of people to massage? Not typically, no. no. When they start looking for people, they find them. They learn a lot about kinesiology, the way the body works. They have to know anatomy to make sure that they're doing massages correctly and not harming somebody in the process. So they, they have to learn a lot of the science behind it before mm -hmm. they're actually able to do it. We are consistently in the high 90s right. in job placement rate. Um, anywhere in the healthcare field right now is in desperate need for people. Um, the pandemic changed a lot of things. A lot of people left the field during that. And then um, the healthcare needs of our country are growing. Mm -hmm. So there's always more and more jobs becoming available in the healthcare field, which is the best thing. Um, when you come to a technical college in one of these health science programs, you are coming in low cost, um, shorter amount of time so you get into the workforce mm -hmm. quicker and you get to start making money quicker, which is always nice. Um, and you know that you're always going to have a job when you're in healthcare. Um, you can go to different areas, different specialties. So maybe you have a love for the older population, mm -hmm. you can work in geriatrics, or if you like the younger population, pediatrics. If you go somewhere and you don't like it, you can always go try something else. So that's what I love about healthcare. Right now, what we're seeing is that they're making between $29 to about $31 an hour, mm -hmm. starting out as a brand new nurse. A lot of the nurses that we're putting out now are reporting that they're even getting sign-on offices yeah. when they start. Um, they give them even more training than what they got here, mm -hmm. um, and they're loving it. During the pandemic, they were making thousands upon thousands of dollars a week as a travel nurse. Um, now that that's settling down, it's 
dropping down a little bit, but they still can make very good money mm -hmm. um, depending on the need that they're filling within right. the hospital. Um, so you have your more remote locations, so maybe Alaska, they mm. might pay a little bit more than a larger city, um, but they can make up to a hundred, sometimes more an hour, depending on where they are. Wow. And that's with a two-year degree? Yes, that's right. with a two-year degree, and typically they'll start taking travel nurses after one year of experience. Okay. And then they receive per diem as well on they top? They do. Mm -hmm. So they will receive money for housing when they're in that new city. Some will help pay for travel or help pay for the license to work within that state mm -hmm. that they're going to if it's not a contact license state. Um, so that adds on to the money right. as well. At Central Carolina, we have a lot of different scholarships and opportunities. So some of our students are having everything paid mm -hmm. for, which is wonderful. Um, we also have lower cost tuition. They haven't raised tuition in a few years now, which has been nice for the students. Um, so it's very minimal debt mm -hmm. that they're um, incurring as they go to school here. It would be able to um, be paid off very quickly. Some of the hospitals and other healthcare organizations have um, programs where they will pay back tuition if mm. you work for them for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. We even have some that are paying for the students to come to school here. Wow. So they pay their tuition each semester. So there are so many opportunities yeah. to go to school for free or close to free right. um, when you're going into the healthcare field. I would say to go ahead and do as much research as you can now. Um, there are so many different options out there, so find what you're passionate about. Go ahead and start reaching out to college advisors and seeing what the next steps would be. Um, taking prerequisites, there's dual enrollment where you can go ahead and start getting college credit while you're in high school and finishing up. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of ways to jump start getting into college and finishing a program. A lot of um, hospitals are seeking more bachelor's degree prepared nurses. Um, they are still hiring a ton of associate degrees, but they do encourage continual growth. So anywhere in the healthcare field, especially in nursing, you are going to be a lifelong learner. Trends are always changing in healthcare, medications change, technology changes. Um, and having that higher degree just shows that you are committed to that mm -hmm. lifelong learning that it takes when you become a nurse. Um, the bachelor's degrees also have a bigger focus on community health, so that's another component that's valuable to a nurse. Um, when you start with your associate's degree, you are out there in the workforce, you're getting experience. There are many degree options where you can go from your RN to a BSN. Um, fully online in short okay. periods of time. So that's what we see a lot of our students doing and we do encourage that. While they're in the program here, they can go ahead and start taking some of the prerequisites for a bachelor's program. So when they get out of here, get a little bit of experience, they can start taking those bachelor's of, um, nursing classes right away. And have it paid for by their employer. Absolutely. Right. It truly is my passion in life, and it's wonderful to be able to help students get to where they want to be. And we think about all the patients that our students are out there impacting their lives in such a positive way. It's a rewarding field. It's, it has its challenges too, of course, as any job does. Um, but in healthcare, there's a place for everybody, and you'll know that you're truly making a difference.